Hi, my name is Neil Wade. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, it's nice to see so many involved uh, citizens and so many people that want to become educated. And I think we are lacking that. And that's one of the challenges we have as a party, um, hearing our, uh, our nominees speak tonight, getting the people out to vote is critical in this election cycle. Uh, I'm a native Nevadan. The first place I remember ever living is about two blocks north of here, Maryland and Bonanza Hill. I remember when that 7-Eleven was built. Uh, and my first school was North Knight. It's not there anymore, but uh, it's a vacant lot. I drove by it and kind of was sad. Um, my wife is also a native. I, uh, she's in medical school. My children, uh, I have three, are young, a 14-year-old who is my campaign manager. A, uh, a seven-year-old who is in charge of all my social media, and a five-year-old who uh, who is my debate coach. And uh, uh, I'm also a veteran, and uh, like I said, a proud Democrat and a proud Nevadan. And the reason I got into this race is because I'm also an angry citizen. The last congressional election cycle, congressional approval was at 11 percent. Ninety-six percent of incumbents won their seats. That's insanity to me. We have a broken political culture in Washington. We can't get anything done because left won't talk to right and right won't talk to left. And when you have representatives that vote party lines and being blue, we're just as guilty. Consistently, we're not representing the district. And that is why I'm running, to represent the entire district. Every man, woman, and child. Race, creed, color, sexual preference, sexual orientation, Democrat, Republican. It's that elected, elected official's responsibility to represent the district. And with that being said, I'll take questions. <laughs> I'm also flux and got a great sense of humor. <laughs> Well, I figure as a native from Japan, you will appreciate this question. Uh, so um, I will, I will throw this to you too. Um, can, you know, considering what we in Nevada have gone through with the uh, fight over Goldview, uh, Clyde and Bundy's rage war against against the government, um, how how do you think we should um, approach the matter of? Um, of these public lands, um, and as a member of Congress, do you, um, you know would you support efforts to pre to preserve areas like gold views, or um, or do you think it's time it's time for um, these public lands to no longer be in federal hands? Uh, I'm a firm believer in uh, the Constitution, and I'm a firm believer. That there's a lot of there's a lot of that play here. So if you've studied it. Uh, there are many states that don't want to turn over their public lands to the federal government, or, or, or vice versa, or retrieve their the federal lands. There's a there's a economic um, uh, hit there. States would have to be required to manage public lands. So uh, so that's one aspect. Now the other aspect is tax revenues. When the uh, when the federal government starts uh, drilling and and retrieving minerals and and things from these public lands, that's part of the tax base that we don't have access to. <laughs> so it's a give and take, uh, and I think it requires the uh, the citizens of the state of Nevada to be involved in that policy and that decision. And I don't think that it's up to uh, to Congress to solely um, make that policy. I think it's up to the individuals who live, uh, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble with that, and I, I project well, so uh, I'm just going to speak to you this way. Uh, it's up to, I think, the citizenship to make those decisions on behalf of what's best for their states in terms of what needs to be protected and continue to be protected. What do we want to give back to the state so the state can sell off and we can increase our tax base to a certain extent? And uh, how much do we want the federal government to keep so that we don't have to start funding the management of those lands? Mm -hmm. Well, um, okay, next off, uh, I figure might as well uh, ask this one again as well, since I don't think it'd be fair for Jackie Rosen to have to answer this solely. Um, 
on um, the on the current interest loophole, um, what, if anything, uh, do you think uh, we need to do to address this? <coughs> Here's the reality, and I know that uh, you know you're going to be saying, "Oh my God, that guy's a Republican in disguise." But uh, the top one percent of earners in the United States pay more taxes than the uh, ninety percent below them. So I am in favor of closing tax loopholes, but we have to close tax, tax loopholes for everyone. And the biggest tax cheat that hurts our economy or hurts, hurts our tax revenue is me, the middle class tax cheat. So if we're going to hold and, and make, uh, hold the, the, the richest uh, accountable for closing tax loopholes, we have to have a fair tax system. And that fairness equates across the board. Uh, and, and what that means is we don't overtax the middle class and we, don't, we certainly don't overtax the people who are living below the poverty line. But we have an equitable and fair tax base. And it is impossible to lay out a tax plan in a 10-minute uh, uh, conversation here. But I think we would all agree that um, we want equity and fairness in our tax code. Okay. Um, you know, moving back to, uh, I guess, a more Nevada-specific issue. Um, there's been a lot of talk over the years about, um, particularly Southern Nevada's, perhaps over-dependence on, uh, on the gaming and entertainment industry, and what we need to do to better diversify our economy. Um, if elected to Congress, um, what do you think you can do to, uh, to diversify our economy, attract new businesses, different businesses here, so that you know, we're no longer a one-trick pony? Uh, another difficult and complicated issue. Um, we all agree that we have limited resources in Nevada. Uh, we live in a climate that receives four inches of rainwater a year, and the West has been in a drought for the last 10 years, and our water essentially comes from the Rockies. So we want to diversify, uh, but we also have to manage our growth because we can't overpopulate and, and ruin our resources or extract our resources any more than we already have. We see the levels at Lake Mead already. Um, now, a huge initiative is renewable energy. Uh, we've seen the solar farms out at state line. We have vast amounts of land where we could tap into for different alternative, alternative and renewable energy uh, sources. Um, the tops of those casinos. Nobody cares what the top of a casino looks like. All we care about is the, uh, is the marquees. If we solarize the top of our casinos, if we solarized and we used wind energy, that's an incredible amount of, uh, of opportunity there to, uh, to allow for alternative, uh, uh, actually to, to reduce, I guess, our dependency on hospitality and tourism. However, this town was built on tourism. This is why people come to Las Vegas. This is where a lot of our tax revenue comes from. So we certainly don't want to discount that. We don't want to compete with tourism. Um, but we, I, I agree, we do want to create uh, a job base that is, uh, allows our citizens and our natives more opportunities than just a service industry career. Does that answer it? I guess so. Um, so finally, uh, since Mr. Timekeeper has been so patient, uh, Am I over? Do you like, uh, if you like to actually, just to be clear, so that everyone gets the same time, we're at the seven and a half minute Perfect. mark. Okay. Just so you know. Uh, so I have a question, but I, I will yield my question if another member of the audience has a question. Okay. Anyone want to close us out? Sure. It's unlikely that. Um, the, the Democrats are going to be able to flip the House in this election cycle, at least. So uh, if that's the case, what would you do as uh, a member of the minority party to try to work within the system to actually do things and accomplish things for, for
for the citizens here in Nevada? That's exactly why I am uh, I'm running, because the number one thing that needs to be fixed in Washington is the culture, and we're all you know we're we're so afraid, uh, and and you know, I'm I'm not immune to this that uh, what if the Republicans win again? Well, if the Republicans win again, but we have a culture in Washington that is collaborative rather than uh, dysfunctional, then we shouldn't be afraid of that. We should know that our representatives are going to be able to collaborate and work with the majority party in Washington and vote and pass legislation and pass policy and create policy that works not only for <laughs> District 3 and Nevada, but the entire country. We are at a crossroads here, and nothing <laughs> is going to be fixed in Washington until we start holding our representatives accountable. It's up to all of us to hold our representatives accountable. And if it's not me, then we hold Jackie or Alex or Steve or Marty. We hold them accountable to what we as a district and as a state expect from our elected official. Not a privileged position but a public position where you are an employee of the district. And when you're back and you're not in session, you're not having town halls, or you can have a town hall, but you're attending the VA meetings and the uh, American <coughs> Legion meetings and the PTA meetings, and you're hearing the citizens firsthand. You're not asking the citizens to come to you. You're going to the citizens. And you don't walk a beat in a district just because it's an election cycle. You walk it between election cycles, and you talk to the citizens, and you make sure that you're living up to their expectations. That's why I'm running. 45 seconds for closing remarks. Uh, in closing, uh, my website is, uh, is completely apropos for Congress. Waitforcongress.com. <laughs> if you want to learn more about me, um, I, uh, I'm much like my friend Alex here. Uh, I uh, do not believe in big money. I do not believe, I believe that uh, PACs and super PACs negatively impact the election process. Uh, uh, too many of us get our information from a 15 second sound bite. And uh, the fewer of those we have, the better off we all are. And I also am a firm believer in uh, not, uh, don't vote for Steve because, but vote for me because I'm who I am. In other words, we got to end negative campaigning too. Just speak your content, and if your content is valid, the people will follow. That's it.